Today's video is something that, ah, what a crappy start. <laughs> let me, let me try that again. Today's video is about a, a recent breakthrough that I had, and it had to do with something I saw an interview on Sunday with, with Penn and Teller of all things. I've, a, I've been a lifelong fan of Penn and Teller. I've always dug magic and illusion and, um. I think a couple things that have drawn me to to Penn and Teller specifically has to do with their real no BS approach to to what they're accomplishing. They're not trying to say, well, gee whiz, I'm indestructible. I'm not. They're not trying to say I actually possess magic. They're actually saying um, this. There's no magic involved here. This is just a trick. Neither one of us are in danger, and and that is cool. Um, I, I think they have a little, a little excessive vitriol to their, to the other people in their industry that present themselves, you know, such as poor Chris Angel. But I think it'll make him a better, make Chris a better, a better performer. However, um, the the interview though had to do with the best ten questions of from Reddit for Penn and Teller, and this is this is a three year old interview, and. Uh, what I found interesting about it was, one, I still have no idea how to correctly use Reddit. I don't know if you guys have been to Reddit or not, but it's a, I don't know. I, I probably could get into it, but something's going to have to give. You know, I've got, I've got Facebook, YouTube. I barely have Twitter, so to add Reddit to everything. Anyway, that's, that's a tangent. That's an aside. What's the point, though, man? Get to it. I've only got a couple minutes here, right? Well... They had asked about how Penn and Teller had been together for so long in business and in their relationship. And the gist of what I got from, from what they said was that they never had like a super strong affection towards each other. This, this super strong, amicable affection. And that's allowed them to, to be together in business for a very, very long time. Because what the, what the, commenter the the questioner questioner had asked was you know they had heard that they don't do much together outside of the performance it's just business and and Penn stated that yeah that that is quite true um and it has to do when they when they first started out they've just had a very a very professional relationship now they're extremely close they've they've lived together uh, Penn was saying that that Teller was the first person to to hold to hold their uh, you know to hold Penn's children after they were born and everything. They are extremely close, and he said, "This is my best friend ever in the world." And I I I actually understood that, but what I understood more about it what it had to do with the the success in business. Uh, and this is from my own personal experience. Uh, in my policy of not doing business with friends and not selling to friends. When, when I have to do business with a friend, there is, for me, an emotional undertone that interferes with good business practices. Um, I work with a couple of my best friends. I, you know, some would say, well, that's lucky. Um, one of them I was a friend with before we worked together, and he actually, we no longer work together. And the other one I became friends with um, while we were working together. Uh, the one person who's gone on has has set out to open his own shop. And as you know, who's been watching the channel, I made my way into the office. You know, I have a little bit of, of uh, management training now and management experience and, and customer and retail management experience. And he's like, hey, man, come on, I, I need your help. Um, come over here and um, I need somebody in the office that I can trust. And I was honored. I really was. But I knew I knew enough about business to know that for me, that was a bad idea. Because he was my supervisor in a couple of situations um, in the shop. And it didn't work out whenever we had a disagreement if, if it's a matter of something needs to be done work-wise, 
and you have a disagreement about how it has to be done. In work and in business, um, with a few exceptions, it's a fairly, fairly sterile process. Um, two people may have a theory on how something gets done. However, um, to actually get something done, to actually make a decision, is quite a sterile process. There's no emotional involved. Uh, so, so let's say two people are friends, and one person is the supervisor over the other person. Or one person makes an observation about another person's work. So they say, hey, can you get this done? And if, if we're in business and there's no friendship, no emotion involved, it's, it's a simple yes, no question. Yes, I can. Here's why I cannot. Whatever. When you're friends or, or there's some sort of weird uh, emotional undertone to it, you're thinking like, well, what is he... What does he mean by that? What does she mean by that? What, what, I know how to do my job. You tell me how to do my job, you know, and, and that, that can mess up for me. That can mess up with success. And, and that's what I told my friend. I'm like, listen, think about it. The number of times we've been at odds and we're talking about our, our ultimate livelihood. Everything's on the line. If we go into business like this, then I'm like, this just cannot happen. I don't do these type of relationships anymore. And it's and it's the time in my life, you know, coming up to middle age where where my friends who do have an entrepreneurial spirit are taking their shot. So I'm actually this is I've had another another situation. And I'm I'm in a position now where I can have an influence in the direction that the company I'm involved with is going. But this policy, I, I, I don't know. I, and I'm not, I'm not 100% sure if it's right because everybody hears that tried old expression. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Business is personal. But the problem when you get too personal, you, you end up almost short-circuiting logical decision-making processes. It puts you in a position where you can't do what needs to be done, where you have something extra that's interfering with what you're doing that ain't even real. So my point is, the last couple of days, um, the one person that I'm really good friends with, I mean, we're in, we're in a hunting club together. We spend a lot of time outside of work together in the outdoors and stuff like that. I've, I've had to actually shut down the emotion that that I feel towards him, um, while at work. And it, it's been a lot, it's been a lot less stressful. It was good for me to, to discover that because it, it was always hanging over my head because my job is tough enough. I have enough obligations already without worrying about, you know, when my friend comes over and he comes back to, to my office or something and he's got a look on his face and then I'm, and I got to think and wonder, hey, what do you mean about that look? Now we're good enough friends that, I can actually go to him and say, "Hey, what's up with the what's up with the face?" and and he can tell me. But but that's just going to slow us down with what we're trying to do, which is we're just trying to make money, man. <sighs> I don't know. So that's me taking a day. See, I'm not you're not the only one taking daily doses. It's me as well. In this little exercise of I don't know what, maybe self-improvement at this point. Y'all take care.